So the second phase of back to school learning, we know it's underway. And a little while ago, we heard from Chancellor Richard Carranza right here on The Morning Show, who assured parents, teachers and principals that schools are safe. We feel extremely confident that we have a safe environment, and that's why we feel good about the choice that our families have. We're going to make sure that it's going to be a safe experience for all. Sounds good, right? Well, however, the Department of Education declined to testify before the City Council about how they handled school reopening. So joining us now is Councilman Mark Traeger, who serves as the chairman of the Education Committee on the Council. Good morning, Councilman Traeger. Good morning. Good to be with you. All right. First and foremost, I want to get your reaction to what the chancellor just said. It, it, it seemed pretty, you know, sterile. We, we hope they have a gr great first day. Things are going to be fine and in place. Do you believe him? Look, we all wish students and staff uh, a safe and, and good and supportive school year. Uh, but I am going to distinguish facts from the fine print and bold headlines from the fine print. Details matter. And as of this moment, we are still experiencing a severe teacher shortage in our school system. As of this moment, there are thousands of kids still without technology and still without Internet. So the administration likes to make the promise that kids are returning to school this week for in-person instruction. I am here to tell you this morning that many students will be getting most likely supervised remote instruction in yeah. schools because of the severe teacher shortage we have in the school system. Now he, to says they're up, he says that they're in the process of hiring right now. I seem pretty confident that everybody in a classroom today will have an educator in front of them. But we're in the middle of this, right? I mean, people are learning from home. They're in a classroom right now, and there is still this severe teacher shortage. What can be done to ensure that this process gets done quickly and that students are not the ones affected here? Well, I have to say this. They had months to prepare for remote instruction. Regardless of whatever model people support in terms of reopening, remote instruction is a part of the program. The fact that thousands of kids still don't have technology and internet is unacceptable to me. Secondly, Dan, I think it's important that we, that we clarify for the record that this, the teacher shortage really also hurts high schools. And I'll explain, I was a high school teacher. Mm -hmm. You need to have a licensed teacher to teach a specific content course. I was a history teacher. If a history teacher is out on medical accommodation, right. you just can't put a gym teacher to cover a history class. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening in many cases in high schools. Their content teachers are out, so they have to move some sub or some staff around who are not licensed to do that work, which, which is why I'm telling you, many of our kids will not be getting in-person instruction. They're going to have someone just watch them as they're working on a laptop in class if they have a laptop. Then. But if you have to have someone licensed and they are not doing so, how do you legally go in and make sure that it is done, especially at this stage of the game? And that's a great question. And that's why I believe that there will be many people who are not really licensed to do this work because of the severe teacher shortage that we're experiencing. Uh, they're in the process of trying to find substitutes. This process should have been taking place months ago. Uh, the mayor promised to redeploy thousands of yeah. central staffers to work in schools. And then later on, he, a memo was sent that they don't have to work in school. So principals have not heard from any of the central staffers. Right. I, I will separate facts and detail. I will separate the fine print and headlines. I am here to tell you that thousands of teachers are still needed in our school system to yeah. this day, particularly in high schools. Look, it, the, the principal's union said they had, there was a complete lack of respect what was done. They, had, they gave that vote of no confidence. I'm concerned specifically about the COVID clusters in Brooklyn, right? Mm -hmm. We're seeing a neighborhood like Borough Park has 17% positivity rating. A bunch of other neighborhoods have 6 or 7%. Kew Gardens just came on the list with 3%. They had set a citywide percentage, they're looking at a positivity rate of 3%. But these neighborhoods have that percentage rate already. Should those schools welcome students back in? We know clusters can lead to community spread. I don't want to be an alarmist here, but what can be done in those neighborhoods? So I represent parts of Gravesend, and I was in touch with a, a principal of a yeshiva in the Gravesend community. Uh, they are cooperating, and, and they have agreed to close their school for at least 14 days. But I have to, take, I have to share this with you. They didn't hear from the administration until after the cases were, were confirmed. There was no communication with the private schools about what their reopening plan looks like. Remember, the, the private schools submitted their plans to the state yep. of New York, not the city of New York. 
So I remain concerned about a, a breakdown in communication with all community stakeholders. That still persists to this day. I, I, I got to follow up there then because, again, you're the chair of the Education Committee. You actually subpoenaed the education officials. They declined to testify right, right now. What can be done? Do you have confidence in the mayor and the chancellor? Should they be the people in power right now in these positions? Yeah, and should the state step in? So I don't have confidence in their plans. Uh, do I believe that the chancellor cares about kids? I think I, I, I do believe that, but I don't think he's really in charge. It's the mayor that's in charge. The issue with the state takeover, which I'll explain, when the state legislature voted on their budget earlier this year, they voted to give the governor extraordinary power, including over the New York City Education Department. Mm. So it's not even clear to me how much power Commissioner Rosa has these days because the governor has basically taken much of that power. Only Governor Cuomo could step in and overrule the mayor on his reopening plan. And I have appealed to the governor because the city's plans are inadequate and flawed. But Dan, I have to also share this with you and, and for all your listeners. The governor is not just a bystander either. Yep. He has a responsibility to provide resources to the city so we can safely operationalize plans because we are still in a financial crisis. A yeah, well, point. the governor says he is watching this very closely, so we'll see what kind of action he takes, if indeed he takes any. Uh, thank you so much for your time. We do appreciate it. Councilman Traeger, keep us posted if anything changes in your communities as well, all right? You're welcome back anytime. Thank you. Appreciate you.